the Amazon Vupskani for Kates, the Amazon VPC, no, the Amazon Virtual Private Cloud Container Network Interface for Kubernetes. That thing has two main options for how it assigns IP addresses to your pods running in Kubernetes. Let's understand it together so you can make better decisions about how you're going to manage your IP addresses in EKS. The default way it works is it just assigns IP addresses from your subnet and your VPC to a pod directly. It takes an IP address and assigns it. How it does that differs depending on how you ha have it set up. So let's pretend that this is my VPC. It's a network boundary in the cloud uh, that gets carved up depending on the AZs with different subnets. But the VPC is the main boundary. Within that VPC, I'm going to have something handing out those IP addresses, and that is the subnet. And each CIDR in the subnet is handing out a certain number of IPs per zone. The total number of IP addresses is set up at this at the VPC layer, and you can add more subnets and more CIDRs to the VPC, but let's just deal with, we have one, all right? We have one CIDR, we have subnets that carve it up. That's the amount of IP addresses we have. To help you visualize just how many IP addresses we're talking about, we're using grains of rice. In this case, I have a slash 24. This is 256 grains of rice. Over here, I got a slash 22. This is roughly 1,000 grains of rice. And over here is a slash 20. This is 4,000 grains of rice. So each one of these grains of rice is representing an IP address in this case. And in Kubernetes, that's going to be one grain of rice per pod uh, that you're running in the cluster. But also within the VPC, there's other things that need IP addresses. Your nodes need IP addresses, private endpoints need IP addresses, NAT gateways, all of these things consume these grains of rice in the VPC that you need available to be able to scale your workloads up. So let's look at what it takes to schedule a single node with a single pod running in our VPC with the default CNI configuration. I get one node that's created inside the VPC. The very first thing I need is an ENI. The ENI is my primary ENI. That is how I get an IP address for this node inside the network. This is a standard network interface inside the VPC that gets attached to the node, and then an IP address gets assigned to that ENI for the node to use. This is just an IP address that I can address the machine itself. A workload gets scheduled, a pod specifically gets scheduled to the node. The VPC CNI will have a secondary ENI attached to that node as well. This secondary ENI is responsible for giving the, the pods IP addresses themselves. So I'm gonna get an IP address for the pod here, which is attached to the secondary ENI. A couple more pods get scheduled here to the node, and I don't need another ENI right now. I have my primary and my secondary, but I can have multiple IP addresses attached to an ENI. So in this case, I'm gonna have three IP addresses ready and available for this node, or, or, or attached to this node with through this ENI. The VPC CNI can also have a warm pool of ENIs available, so that once I have all of the IP addresses available for this ENI used, I automatically will have another ENI available, ready to go. So default attachment rate might be 30 IPs per ENI. So I could run 30 pods, but as soon as that's not available, I'm gonna hit a resource constraint on these IP addresses. So I have a secondary ENI ready to go that can take another 30 IP addresses. But different nodes have different amount of ENIs that you can attach to them. So I may not be able to have more than say four ENIs attached, which would give me a total number of 90 IP addresses in this case, or 90 pods running on this node. So even though maybe my default says I should be able to run 110 pods, I might hit a resource constraint of 90 IP addresses on the node itself, and I can't schedule any more. Of course, there, there can be other resource constraints on the node itself. I might hit CPU limits, disk IO, amount of memory available. So there's all sorts of constraints on the node itself. In this case, we're only looking at the CNI and how the IP addresses play a role in scheduling those pods. The VPC CNI can also work in prefix assignment mode or prefix delegation mode. In this case, I have my node still and I get one ENI. And instead of getting 
say 30 individual IP addresses, I can get up to 30 prefixes of slash 28 addresses. And a slash 28 address is 16 IP addresses. So when the node starts up and if the VPC CNI is in prefix mode, it's automatically going to assign these 16 IP addresses. So when a pod comes in, I already have the IP addresses available to attach to those pods. The node doesn't have to do anything. The VPC doesn't have to do anything. All of the IP addresses are already there and already allocated. If I run out of these IP addresses, if I use the first 16, again, I can assign multiple prefixes to a single ENI. So I get another 16 IP addresses and another 16 IP addresses after that. So all of these, that's three prefixes of slash 28 assigned to this one ENI, which are available for workloads. And so instead of needing multiple ENIs and hitting a limit on how many ENIs I can attach to the node, I'm going to probably run out of uh, node capacity in CPU or memory before I hit a limit on the prefixes available. So if I'm looking at say 30 prefixes on a single ENI, that's 480 IP addresses. Yes, I had to do the math. Uh, you're gonna get 480 IP addresses available for the pods, minus one for the node, off of a single ENI. And remember that bandwidth is not a limitation of the ENIs themselves. Bandwidth on EC2 is a limitation of the CPU of the instance you're using. So if you need more throughput or more packets per second, you have to use a bigger instance type or one that's network optimized. Attaching more ENIs isn't gonna give you more throughput or more advantages. In this case, we can use a single ENI attached to a single node with multiple IP addresses assigned in prefix mode and get all of the benefits of densely packing pods on this node so long as we're not running into other constraints on memory or CPU. With multiple nodes in the cluster, again, each one gets a single ENI in prefix mode with the with 16 IP address increments per each prefix that's assigned. The VPC CNI will keep multiple prefixes available per ENI as needed. So as I add more pods here, I can get more prefixes available. This can greatly speed up your ability to scale up quickly because again, you don't need to attach ENIs, multiple ENIs. You don't need to get IP addresses from the VPC. The node already has the IP addresses available and is attaching them locally. And all of the routing within the cluster happens because it's all within the same subnet. These are just chunks of IP addresses given to each node that are already available for those workloads. If you're really curious or worried about IP address exhaustion, then let's talk about IPv6. And no, I'm not joking. In IPv6 mode, I still get prefix delegation. I'm getting one ENI per node, but the amount of IP addresses I assign to this ENI are a little bit more. Uh, this bag of rice has approximately 1.5 million grains of rice. In order to assign a slash 80 IPv6 to this ENI, I would need 200 million bags of rice. That's how many IP addresses would be assigned to this, Nick per node inside the VPC. There's a lot of IP addresses in IPv6. So if you don't want to exhaust your IP addresses, uh, you, can, you can switch to IPv6, you won't run out. I guarantee you that will not be the limiting factor in your cluster. There are of course other modes for running the VPC CNI. You can use a custom mode, which lets you do a lot of different things. You could also bring your own custom network overlay if you would like. But in the default configuration, this is how it works with an EKS cluster. You get the VPC CNI, and in the default mode of getting IP addresses per ENI is how it's going to work. If you want to switch to get faster scale up or more IP addresses available, look at the prefix delegation. There are some VPC considerations that you need a large enough block of the subnet available to assign to the ENIs. So if you have random IP addresses taken from all over the place or your, your CIDR isn't large enough to begin with, this isn't going to add more IP addresses. You can add a secondary CIDR to get more IP addresses, maybe one dedicated to pods, and you can configure the VPC CNI to use that instead in prefix mode to get the fastest scalability, or again, switch to IPv6. IPv6 is gonna give you those IPv6 IP addresses per pod. You can still route to IPv4 addresses, and you'll never run out of IP addresses again.